Now we go to rock. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Bati Sukhale and we're back with yet another true crime case. You know what, man? I actually realized that this hairstyle that I have, guys, I have hair. Please, like, there's hair. I feel like you get, like, I don't know how it looks, but it might look like I'm bald. But I'm, like, I have hair. I have hair. Anyway, so today we're covering the story of Yudi Simelani. On the 28th of April 2008, Mali Simelani was on her way to run a few errands. And just before she left home, she heard the TV in her daughter's room was on. So she basically just assumed that her daughter was back from the night out. And as um, Mali was about to leave, her neighbor asked her if she could please accompany her to the police station because her son had just been arrested. Now, Molly really, really hated the police station. It wasn't really her thing. It wasn't like she just didn't like being at the police station. But she was like, okay, cool, no problem. She'll just, um, like, you know, out of being a good person out of goodwill she'll just escort her neighbor to the police station so upon arrival they actually then realized that it actually wasn't about you know the neighbor and her son actually wasn't arrested this was false they had actually asked that um they find a way to bring Mali into the police station because they had news for her now Mali's son bafana was actually at his grandmother's house it was his day off he was listening to music you know just relaxing change of scenery type of vibes and that is when a woman actually Actually came up to him and was like hey can I ask you something or can I tell you something rather like there's actually a rumor going around and so then Bafana was like okay cool no problem you know let's go for it and don't forget Mali and um, Bafana's Mali's oldest son right so cool this is like happening on the other side of the world Mali's still at the police station receiving the news while Bafana's at his grandmother's house so anyway cool moving on um so you know he's relaxing and this lady's like hey there's something i need to tell you and so she's like there's a rumor going around that your younger sister ud similane has been murdered and so he was like no dude don't joke around like that like that's madness that's not even a real thing and so he basically he got so upset about it like how can you even joke like that you know like wow and then 10 to 15 minutes later the neighbor who took mali to the police station contacted bafana and told Bafana, or rather called Bafana and was like to Bafana, hey, we need you to come back home. And Bafana asked, like, is there a problem? Is something going on? And she's like, no, I just really need to see you. And then Bafana got into a taxi and now he was on his way back home to his mother's house. Now on his way back home to his mother's house in Guatemala, he had passed a field. And so upon passing this field, there was like a group of people like in the field, right? So he passed and obviously he's wondering like, oh, what's going on there? I wonder what's going on, right? He then arrived to his mother's home. That's when he bumped into the neighbor. And then the neighbor asked, well, said to him, you know, he needs to go to the police station to meet up with his mom. And so obviously now Bafana is a bit suspicious, like something is definitely going on and the neighbor was like you know what i'm not going to be the one to break the news to you or to tell you please your mother's waiting for you at the police station bafana then decided to get back into another cab and to drive to the police station he then passed the field again where it is that he saw like a group of people and he says that there were more people than before there were cars so he was like okay whatever's going on here is really serious upon bafana arriving at the police station you know he met his mom there and that is when they broke the news that there is well his sister yudi Simelane, had just been murdered and when the cop there was a cop that was like telling the mom like when they were telling the mom and it's just like yeah your daughter is dead that seems a bit insensitive i don't know like your daughter's dead like okay um but that's how they broke he even got the name wrong he's like yeah your daughter trudy is dead and the mom was like no her name is not trudy her name is yudi and he's like yeah that well she yeah unisimela and she's she's dead she was murdered Yudi Simelane, born on the 11th of March, 1977, 
was a soccer coach, she was a referee, um, she worked with people that had HIV and AIDS, and she was a soccer player. She was actually a midfielder for the South African national team known as Banyana Banyana. Yuri also used like her status and because people knew her, um, you know, to help empower the LGBTQ plus community. Um, she was a, she was known to be a lesbian woman, and you know, she lived freely. She knew apparently from a very young age. Since she was four years old, you know, she used to play soccer with her brother. She was always always with her brother. She always played with boys. Now, when Yuri was only 12 years old she had actually told her mom you know mom i'm a lesbian will you still love me and yudi's parents they supported her so much they loved her so much that was their child that they were so 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 proud of her she was actually about to start a new job at a law firm in pretoria and she had actually taken her mom there as well to go and like see her office and stuff like that well this was before like the tragedy but she they were so proud of her they were they were very proud of her and they were very supportive Yudi's mom and brother Bafana were then driven to the site where it is that it happened and that field is known as a dumping site for gangsters and so upon them arriving obviously there were still so many people there apparently like that specific portion where it is that um the murder took place like there was a lot of blood at the place and so Bafana like when he describes it he says that when he saw the blood he became so 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 emotional and he basically just started to like cup it like into his hands like cup the blood into his hands and then he started to actually like drink the blood and so people were like no why are you doing that like don't do that you know and stuff like that but he was like you know what that's his blood that's his sister's blood and he's not gonna leave it there like he would rather drink it and it's within him then for him to leave his sister's blood like on an open field now on that night on the 27th of april 2008 yudi and her friends were out at a tavern you know she was dressed in apparently like a leather a long leather coat boots jeans you know the way that she would usually dress and around half past one in the morning the friends then decided that you know it was time for them to head home and upon them crossing like by that field then they were approached by a group of aggressive men now there's no record of what happened to Yudi's friends but they just disappeared I guess because she was the only one that was murdered that night. Yudi was left face down in like a small drainage in the middle of the field. She was robbed of her cell phone. There's a question of whether or not she had money um, but apparently they're like they're guessing a cell phone, money were taken from her. Yudi was stabbed nine times and three of those were on her thighs. She was also like sexually violated and apparently like the, the scars on her thighs, like it looked like they were, like it's not just the stab, like it looked like, you know, like they pulled basically and yeah then she was raped and so because that area or that field rather is known as a gangster's dumping site there's like houses around it as well and so the people that live there do say that you know they hear screams all the time like every night almost there's screams of people being raped or being robbed or whatever the case may be they do recall hearing a woman screaming that night so we assume that it was probably Yudi that like she was screaming just before it happened and so then they only decided to come out while well, the neighbors or the people that live nearby decided to only come out the morning after and that is when Yudi's half naked body was discovered when she was laying um like face down Within 24 hours, her coat and some of her other belongings were found with the men that had murdered her. And because it was 24 hours, you know, we're thinking maybe it was a tip off. Maybe someone saw something because it, they didn't waste time. They literally found these four men and these four men were then charged with rape and with murder. Now, the men did claim that um, it was a robbery, that they didn't really know who she was. Like that wasn't the motive the motive or the plan rather wasn't to kill her they had just planned to rob her and Yudi's father was so distraught he threatened to you know hang himself and he was just like no he would rather just leave with his daughter because he like he can't imagine being alive and she's no longer with us on the 4th of may 2008 she was then laid to rest and apparently there were so 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 many people just at least over a thousand mourners were there to celebrate you know the community the lgbtq plus community was also there they came in numbers because of you know the violence that it is that they face as a community so they basically you know just came out in numbers to support the family to support beauty because she also stood so 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 much for 
that community. Now, on the 11th of February, 2009, that is when the trial began. And the men, like I said, mentioned that they thought it was like it was basically supposed to be a robbery. But because of the violence that it is that, um, you know, people from the LGBTQ plus community face, um, it was well, the suspicion was that it was probably a hate crime because she was a lesbian. And so the men said that, no, it wasn't a hate crime or that's, that wasn't the motivation behind it. Now, one of the suspects who went by the name of Tato, he's basically the one that ratted out all the other three men. He basically told the full story of what it is that happened that night. And there was another suspect who was named Johannes. And apparently he raped her because she didn't have any money on her. And that's why I'm saying, like, we're not sure if she had it or she didn't have it. But apparently the reason why he raped her was because she had no money on her. Yudi recognized one of the men who went by the name of Temba and so basically apparently that was his reasoning for why it is that she had to be killed because he knew her or they knew each other rather he felt that you know should be able to point them out so then he suggested that she would rather then be murdered six months later the man that had ratted the other men out tato he then came out and he said that he was a born again christian so that he couldn't lie anymore and so basically only him and temba had something to do with it and that the other two men had absolutely nothing to do with it and so then the other two men were released and so then temba and tato were the ones that were then charged the men were then sentenced to life and temba um couldn't really explain why blood was found on his trousers so that was one of the most incriminating things like for him and you know after it was that they were sentenced one of the reporters managed to get a hold of him just before you know they took him into the cells and he just laughed and he said that really he didn't feel bad at all. Tato and Temba were then the first men in South Africa to be charged with corrective rape. And so what corrective rape is, is that, um, you know, say like in her situation, she was a lesbian. And so they wanted to correct like her being a lesbian, you know, they wanted to correct that. So it's actually something that happens so, so, so often, especially in the LGBTQ plus community. And it's so strange. I don't understand why, you know, people can't just let other people just live their lives. You know, if someone has made that decision, I feel that everyone else should just respect their decision to do that. I don't think anyone deserves to be raped or even murdered, you know, because they're a lesbian. And so they were basically charged under, you know, the corrective rape. In 2016, Yudi's parents received a further award that was in honor of Yudi and Yudi's life and what it was that she stood for. Her parents really, really, really struggled after she passed away. They found it so hard to move on. They found it so hard um, to forgive her brother, still finding it very, very hard to forgive. There's actually a clip that I watched. One of the uncles had said that, you know, he let her go because he feels that the men that did this were still a bit childish, like they were kids. So he had to forgive them on that basis but the other uncle said that he just can't find it in his heart to forgive those men because what it is that they did is so unforgivable like the way that she looked the way that they murdered her in the way that they made her was so senseless like it wasn't humane at all so he's having a really really hard time um forgiving the perpetrator in April of 2019, Miley, who is Yudi's mother, sadly passed away. And, you know, just before she passed away, she was in full support of the LGBTQ community. She attended their funeral. She attended some of their events. And the LGBTQ plus community also built a bridge where it is that Yudi was murdered to turn it into like a memorial, like a nice place. They built it themselves. They invited the police. They invited her family. The whole community came as well. And it was basically just in honor of UD. And that is the story of UD Simulani. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. Please don't forget to like, to comment, to subscribe. Let me know what other cases you would like for me to cover. Bye. We're done shooting, guys. We're done. We're done. We're done.